Hey dancers, welcome back to the Dance with Miss Achi channel. Today's video is extra special because we are going to be chatting with Rachel Fine. Rachel is not only so sweet, but she is a registered dietitian nutritionist specifically for dancers. She actually created the Healthy Dancer program and this is the only dietitian created program for dancers. So we are gonna be listening in. I'm gonna be in the vlog with you. You'll see what I mean. Learning the five tips to becoming the healthy dancer. Let's do it. Hi dancers, I'm Rachel Fine, registered dietitian nutritionist and founder of To The Point Nutrition. I created the community The Healthy Dancer to teach dancers just like you how to utilize food as a way to both fuel their body and optimize their performance, but do so in a way that promotes sustainable habits along with a balanced and positive relationship with both food and body. Today, I'm sharing with you my favorite five tips for how you can build the fundamentals of what it means to become the healthy dancer. Let's dive in. First things first, we want to reject dancer diet culture. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, there are a ton of different opinions out there in regards to what dancers should and what dancers should not be eating. But here's the problem. Any type of restrictive mindset, so whether this means you telling yourself you cannot eat any one type of food because it's either maybe unhealthy or maybe just bad for a dancer's body, or you actually implementing a physical restriction like not eating enough calories or any one type of macronutrient throughout your day is going to cause negative consequences on your physical and mental performance. Ask yourself, how is this rule actually benefiting my performance? Most often, it's probably taking away from your mental performance. And remember, our mental well being plays a huge role in our performance. I love this point by Rachel, the kind of just ditching diet dancer culture, if you will, and kind of being mindful of like how you're restricting yourself. A little story on my end, we're gonna get personal a little bit, but let's do it. In high school and college, I was vegetarian and I was like restricting a ton of, ton of food, I think to be healthy and I'm kind of a picky eater or healthy, what I thought was healthy. And it actually kind of went the opposite direction for me. The restrictions kind of took a toll on my mental health. My anxiety got really, really, really bad because I just wasn't giving my body what it needed. And I'm actually kind of dealing with that right now too. I don't eat gluten or dairy for a slew of reasons, but I have kind of been evaluating whether that's like helping me or if those restrictions are actually harming me, I guess. So it's really interesting to hear a dietitian nutritionist talk about this because there are some times where I feel like my own restrictions are actually like making things more stressful and like really strict and, and structured that like maybe it's time to kind of let some of those things go. So, so we'll see, lots to think about in this first tip. Let's move on to number two. Fueling our body adequately. So when it comes to actually devising your daily meal plans, you wanna think about abundance, variety, and balance. But let's first chat about balance. So when I'm referring to balance, I'm referring to getting in the three major macronutrients into each of your meals and snacks throughout the day. This involves incorporating a source of carbohydrate, protein, and fats. Now, as I mentioned earlier, dancer diet culture likes to sometimes put protein on a pedestal and give carbohydrates and fat, a bit of a questionable reputation, but I want you to remember that all three of these macronutrients play critical roles in both your dance performance and your health. So we don't wanna let any fall to the waistline. We wanna incorporate all of them within our meals and snacks throughout the day. For example, pairing granola, which is a great source of carbohydrates, with some yogurt, a great source of protein, and topping that with some chopped nuts or seeds if you have an allergy, which are a great source of fat, contribute to a wonderful balanced snack for a dancer. Utilizing nutrition information, but doing so in a non-obsessive way means turning to trusted sources like a registered dietitian nutritionist to educate you on what it means to choose various foods as a way to promote 
sustainable energy levels, and an optimal muscle recovery. Okay, so a little fun fact about all of the information that you get from Miss Ati slash T and Me, our dance app. We are part of a program that basically pledges us to promise that any information you receive about nutrition or diet or that kind of stuff will only come from a registered dietitian nutritionist. So you will never get information that's not not from somebody who's super credible. So this channel and the Tea and Me Studio app is a great place to get that information, knowing that you're getting it from someone who knows what they're talking about. Because of busy schedules, dancers need to figure out how to fuel consistently throughout the day. It can be easy for dancers to forget a meal or a snack and therefore result in an extended period of time where their body is not necessarily repleting any lost energy stores. This can cause a negative consequence on our performance. We'll feel drained, we'll lack mental clarity, difficulty focusing in class, and even put us at risk for injury. So in order to promote consistent meal and snack times throughout the day, I encourage that you think of some convenient snack options that you can pack in your dance bag for those busy performance days and even rehearsal schedules. Okay, this is literally my favorite topic. I am, I have been called snack queen by my friends. Um, I love, love, love snacks, so I have three recommendations to give you. Number one, if you're a diehard Miss Ati fan, you've already seen this in one of our videos, it's the Go Macro Bar, and it is the oatmeal chocolate chip, my favorite. They're vegan and gluten-free, and they're just so delicious. Number two is pretzels. I love like the crunchy, salty kind of a pretzel, um, and Rachel actually just recommended that. And then number three, I do love like some strawberries or a banana if you're kind of on the go, or even an apple. So those are my, uh, my three uh, recommendations from your credible snack queen over here, thank you. Another integral part of what it means to become the healthy dancer is building a narrative that promotes a positive, balanced, and perhaps neutral approach to how we feel about our body. See, dancers do have a ton of pressure around them when it comes to maintaining a most often unrealistic, ideal, body type. But the problem is this ideal is, like I said, unrealistic and therefore removing the joy from what it actually means to be a dancer. So I encourage you to rewrite yourself narrative. Now I know this can be hard, but I want you to try sitting down with your favorite journal and writing down three things about your body that you appreciate. Utilizing body appreciation is one of my favorite tools in order to build this more neutral and positive outlook on ourselves. These affirmations help remind us and even help to rewire neural pathways in regards to what we think of ourselves. And the truth is you deserve to nourish your body and fuel for performance just because you're you, not because you maybe did an extra rep of your workout or because you took an extra class, but instead because you are human and you deserve to nourish your body. All right, dancers, so I love the idea of all of you journaling some body positive thoughts or some affirmations, whatever word you wanna use for that. It is really powerful to write things down. So in my cute little notebook here, I did write down three affirmations that I will share with you. So the first one is, I'm thankful that my body can do hard things. I'm thankful that I nourish my body with good food and I'm thankful for strong legs that let me dance and move and teach all of you. So I wanna know what affirmations all of you wrote down and kind of what your takeaways from this video was. So leave some comments in the comment section and don't forget to find Rachel. We'll let her do a little outro right now so you know exactly where to find her. I hope you've enjoyed these various tips about how you can build the fundamentals of what it means to become a healthy dancer. You can follow me on Instagram at to the Point Nutrition and check out my blog, dancenutrition.com, where I offer a ton of free advice for dancers just like you of all ages and levels. I'll see all of you next week. Don't forget to find us on Instagram at Ati Kamal and at Tea and Me Studio. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to the channel and to sign up for our free email list, go to atikamal.com and add your little email in that cute little box up top. See you later. Oh, 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 oh,